right, all right, all right. Thank you for staying with Daybreak. We're getting into the social square hour. But before we do that, of course, you're talking about the newspaper review. We'll look at every issue that is making headlines and find out what the artists think about it from a different perspective. So we're not talking to the members of parliament, the legislators, the MPs, the governors. It's from the ordinary monainchi who are doing other things apart from politics. And they also have views of what's happening around their country. I want to introduce my guests real quick, beginning from my immediate left. Holy Dave, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. An artist and a TV host, Asante Sana, for coming in. Appreciate it. And we have Vivian, a performing artist as well. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Your hair is fantastic, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Santa Sana for coming in. Asante Sana. We also have Eric Musioka, Musioks, a Just producer. Pleasure. You say you're now one of our resident panelists. Yes. <laughs> Breakfast, yeah. <laughs> Santa Sana. And Tosh Gitonga, movie director. Yes. Santa Sana for coming in as Santisana. well. Santa Sana. Let's start with the front page of the Daily Nation. Kolimo's final hours with President Uhuru Kenyatta. Take care of my wife and children. President reveals last meeting with the late Safaricom CEO during which they discussed various issues including the future of the company, Kenyatta's legacy and Bob's wishes. The reason I want you guys to delve into this is because many of the artists have been speaking to say that Bob was a very instrumental part of the art industry. Let's start with you, Tosh. What do you remember him for? Uh, did you ever interact with him? <coughs> Um, yeah, actually, yeah. Um, I think it was 2013. Um, I got a call from him. I was in Germany in a talent class. And I remember seeing, you know, those numbers that are 0722. And it kept calling. You know, sometimes when Kenya Kupige Kilia Fani, they cut. Yeah. So I picked up and it was like, uh, this is Bob Kolimo. Um, uh, I was wondering if you could grace us with your presence at our house. Hey, Nikasema, hey, okay, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I went to his house. Um, very cool guy. I mean, what I've um, I got to, to like about him is that he's so easy with people. I think he demystified that CEO, you know, aloofness. Yeah. You know, like he's, he, he was like someone who you could just vibe yeah. about anything. And for me, what I really uh, admired about him and what I remember, what he's done for not just us as the art people, but the whole country yeah. is insisting on almost all suppliers to be from Kenya, mm. you know, yeah. giving us the chance to, to, to do bad work until we get it right, yeah. you know, but saying, but a well, chance anyway. you know. Yeah. We make our money in this country, so we're going to spend it here. And that for me is huge. Mm. Yeah. All right. Mr. My first interaction with him was uh, during the Safaricom's, Nikona Safaricom concerts. Yeah. Uh, one of the artists signed to our label P unit were contracted by Safaricom to headline the shows. So we got a chance to talk with him about music. And during the events, he would just come backstage see what we were doing and just observe our work. But I personally didn't get a chance to sit with him, but I mean, his contribution to the entertainment industry was immense. Yeah. yeah. All right, Vivian? Um, I think I'll probably just echo what uh, Musioka has said there. Um, I, I didn't get an opportunity to meet him personally. However, I benefited from his work because I have been part of the Torres Alive. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's a phenomenal kind of space. That's why also I got to meet Tosh. Mm. So he, 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 through his company, of course, he was able to create a space where as artists, we could excel at our best yeah. and showcase our work to the people and actually feel valuable. Yeah. Cause that's always a problem for artists, feeling accepted and feeling valuable and feeling like what you're doing is worth something. You know, just the general appreciation of the public. And through his role in Safaricom, he did that very mm. well. Yeah. Holy, holy mm. day. I mean, Trevor, if we had 10 CEOs like uh, Bob Collimo in Kenya who support the arts, I think we'd be very far. Yeah. Um, I got to meet him. Well, I didn't even shake his hand, but I got to see him. I was around him during uh, Giuliani's album launch a yeah. few years back uh, at City Hall. And, you know, I'm like, this is a CEO of one of the biggest companies in Eastern Central Africa. He's just down there with the people having fun. And coming from the gospel industry, 
he supported, uh, rather Safaricom has supported Groove Awards. Mm. Um, Groove Awards is one of the institutions, one of the structures in the industry that has brought out talent and, and um, rewarded talent. So it's a, it's a big thing. If we had, um, and also I can't, I can't fail to mention the Safaricom Jazz Festival, the classical concert and all that. Mm. So if we had several other CEOs like him, it would be nice. But me, again, as I finish, mm. uh, something that stood out for me was the boys club and how how cool he was. You know, um, Jeff Koenange's show the other day was on fire. Yeah. People on social media are really inspired by the fact that this is a big guy, really influential guy, but was kicking it with his boys and, yeah. yeah. And that is the biggest easy. issue there, the Holy Dave, and it's in interesting that you brought it up because I was asked that question by someone that do you have boys who can really stand by you? That's and right. And I wasn't mm. so sure of answering exactly, that Exactly, but then you should ask yourself, Trevor, and, and ask, do, are, are, are we good boys to our boys? Right. Yeah. You know, it starts with us. I can't, I can't be like, I want, I want to have good boys, I want to have these cool guys, I want to have influential guys, yet I'm not being the same to them. So it's a, it's it's a, a given a, to yeah, situation. That's right. That's yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's take a look at, let's talk about a bit of politics. I know you guys don't really like politics, but we'll, we'll talk about it anyway. It affects, it affects your day-to-day -day life. And I won't even go into the details. So front page of the standard, it's a DP's aide says, I got Lamada secret tapes. So there's an assassination probe as we speak. Secretary of Digital Media at State House, Dennis Itumbi, sensationally claims he has the video and audio evidence that group discussed elimination of the DP Ruto. Without getting into the nitty gritties of this situation, because it's already in court as we speak. Oli Dave, and I'll start with you. What do you make of the political scene in Kenya now? Are they addressing the issues that the youth want to be addressed? Because now we are heading more towards 2022 campaigns. And even promises of the previous campaigns have not been fulfilled just yet. But this is a conversation that's happening. We are seeing alignments and realignments. But the Kenyans are still left in the same position, still politically polarized. Nobody ever sees through that the politicians are basically just going for their own interests. This is like a movie, man. <laughs> You're a movie, man. <laughs> this so is a nice script. The movie director nice. on this one. <laughs> this, this, this is like a movie, and this is sensational, and this is what we like. This is what yeah. the media likes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know what to make of it. I mean, I haven't even tweeted or even joined the conversation because I'm like, you know, <laughs> I don't even know, know what to say. To me, this is a non-issue. These are sideshows, and I think, as you're saying, Trevor, we should be addressing the real issues. I don't know. Probably you guys have more to say. <laughs> of the political scene in Kenya today. Well, well um, I think even just as, as a lady, I would, it, it's sort of like, it breaks us apart as women, right? Because at the end of the day, we are, uh, we are really keen on wholesome, you know, that kind of wholesome living, the kind of community vibe. And in our country, clearly, like, if you have eyes, if you have ears, you know, it's even in the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> it's just clear that, any hapa, in Indurama too, you know, there is really nothing that really directs itself in regard to um, dealing with the issues that all of us Kenyans face and wake up to every day, mm. the real life. Because this is, I mean, what is this? Hey, <laughs> 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 Wazi. Hey, Wazi. what do you make of it? You have seen these political realignments year yeah. in, year out. They just change and people just, it's all for their own selfish interest. And nobody seems to be able to see through it. Now there's Team Tanga Tanga, mm. there's Team Kieleweke, there's mm. Team Wanjiku, yes. where they, sh they all should have been to begin with. <laughs> yeah. For me, I have three statements that I, when it comes to politics, because everybody has an opinion. Yeah. And f first of all, from the Bible, Jesus says, give in to Caesar what belongs to. Caesar. So let politicians deal with politicians. Yeah. Yeah. Same script, different cast. Yeah. Same forest, is it different forest or same <laughs> different, <monkey? so> different <laughs> forest, same monkey. <laughs> same monkey. Yeah. Because you really, honestly, you, you can't make head or tail of some yeah. of the things that these politicians yeah. get involved in. So sometimes the only sad thing is that it's polarizing yeah. and there are people who take it to heart and they act and sometimes the outcome is not something desirable. And whose fault is that? Is it the people who are passing on these messages or the people who are receiving it? Because they can clearly the see that the, the political message, realignments definitely. keep changing all the yeah, time. So the it people, means it was never about you to begin with. Yeah. At the end of the day, these guys are friends, yeah. and it's all about interest. That's it's a political rule. Yeah. yeah, there are no permanent enemies and permanent friends. So, 
it's for you to discern and see what are what stories are available and for you to decide what what to do what is valuable to you all right yeah. tosh what do you think what should we be prioritizing at this particular point ah, you know <laughs> <laughs> you know as a, as a, as a filmmaker you you're a storyteller yeah and and telling stories is about observing uh, about life because film is is a mirror of the society and um what I've come to realize with a lot of pain is that um, this goes way back. We're, we're, we're actually in, 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 in we're, we're facing a big problem. This goes way back even time for uh, Mau Mau, yeah. you know, and the home guards mm. and the, the, the psychological warfare of, of making us Africans fight against each other by being about, I'm better than you if I have more than you. Right. That alone is what is keeping us in this situation because our, our political class gets into the office not to serve the people but to make themselves um, richer. richer yeah. you know? business. Yeah. And, and when you look about, when you ask and when you sit down and you say, okay, so you want to be like if you ask me and we'll say, okay, why do you want to be rich? Eh? We'll talk about how we want to buy big cameras and how we want to, you know. But if you ask some of these people why they want to be rich, you know, and we've seen it. You'll see a guy who has billions in his account, but he, he you know, after he's bought a house in Karen and bought a V8 and, and uh, a V8, that's it, <laughs> yeah? But he feels important because he has a lot of, he has more money than he'll sit in the local club and feel better than the other man because you respect me because of more money. Yeah. So that thing of, of I am better than you because I've got more money than you is what ails us. Yeah. And the, the, the day that we address that, the day that that changes, because we keep saying, look at Europe, uh, the, the, the MPs or the political people who take no more transport, you know. Um, they, they, they are not like ours, you know, they, they serve the people, they are normal people, they take the train. It's because for them it's, not, it's about serving the people. It's yeah. making sure that the transport system works for everyone. So our moral psyche first has to change Oof. before anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got, it's like, it feels like it's something small, yeah. but it's, we've got to sit down and really look at history and see where we've come from. Okay. And then maybe start from there. All right. Also, yeah. as, uh, let me just add something on, on to that. I think we need to know our roles and define our roles. I mean, us as Wanjiko, yeah, or Musioki. <laughs> <laughs> what's our what's our role in checking the government? Right now, do we even have an opposition in Kenya? So again, it, it boils back to our institutions. Are our institutions strong? Yeah. Who's supposed to check the government right now? If I was to ask us. But, you know who's the opposition. But even as we speak right now, there are people amongst the youth who have already decided who they are voting for. Exactly. Regardless of and the And we're jumping the gun, man. You know, like, like why are we in 2022? Mm. Why are we there? Yet we haven't, as you mentioned, we're, we're not even done checking the government on the promises they made. Where are the stadiums? Where are the stadiums? <laughs> and then regarding this issue you're asking us, huh? um, this is a relevant game. A lot of these uh, in, in individuals mentioned in these, in these cover stories are just seeking relevance. I'm not mentioning names. But as Musioka said, it's a business for them. So yeah. their brand has to be strong. They have to be just a fire the, brand. Yeah, just the way an artist will, will be in a scandal or try and bust a stunt just uh, before the album launch or a song release. Uh, these guys are saying they just want to be top of our minds. Because, I mean, as, as a country, if, if, if you look at developed nations, yeah. I mean, they, they have very rigid government structures that politicians can't easily interfere with. Mm. I mean, our systems are easy to yeah. to interfere, infiltrate, and manipulate. Mm. So it's, it's to our disadvantage, honestly, because it doesn't serve the common man. Yeah. So we have a perforated yeah. system. Yeah. As long as you have money, you're powerful, you're influential, you can, you can get bypass things. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But I also think it's a little bit of a mind shift problem, right? Mm. Even for us as now the citizens of the country. Because we ail a lot from this thing called a poverty mentality, right? And which means even when uh, there's poverty mentality, there's imposter syndrome, all those things. Mm. And all those things are you believing that you as an individual, Utoshi, who is You're not good enough. You know, yeah. so you need someone else to do something for you. But how about if we, you know, swapped that a little bit and decided now for example me as vivian in my capacity according to what i do am i doing the best with what i have yeah. right and am i in the right in the right space am i communing properly with the people i i meet with every day am i communing properly with the people who i'm with uh in the music industry with you know so such conversations also will go a long way because we can talk here and say you know these politicians for me as a musician Probably what I would just say is they just need to give us more money. <laughs> we'll do the rest ourselves, yeah. right? Yeah. But really, it's not really about saying that, you know, they also need to change. We need to look at ourselves first. There's a big problem in terms of how we think mm. most of us as Kenyans. Right. And that's yeah. where a lot of the issues emanate from. Yeah. Brilliant. And on that note, we're taking a quick break here on Daybreak. When we come back, we're talking about the Kenyan content now. And Tosh mentioned something that I'm better than you because I have more money than you. We'll find out whether artists are going to ex further extents just to make more money, even though there are certain moral issues that they don't believe in. And then we'll see whether morality and what Kimani was saying earlier on, that as long as it resonates with the audience, it is okay. So morality versus resonance. We'd also like to know what you think. How would you rate the Kenyan art industry? Good, bad, why? Tweet at Citizen TV Kenya Trevor Mbeja. Hashtag is daybreak. We'll sample some of your views. I already see some of them coming through on us online. But let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll get into that discussion on Social Square. We'll move away from the serious table. Sit back, relax, talk about issues affecting the art industry. See you in just a bit.